not that tall, so you can fit in your hand really well. But this one, this one's the best experience. After the launch event in Beijing, a storm actually kept us from getting to Shenzhen on time. So a morning ride on a plane and then on a bus through the very damp conditions in Shenzhen finally brought us to the Oppo factory where we're going to see not only the creation process for their phones but also all of the testing that goes into their quality control. But first, however, we did have to have a little bit of a powwow, but before long at the front office, we were able to get going and get straight to the factory in order to see all that goes into the Oppo phones. But first, we did have to don some pretty interesting garb before we even got in, maybe just for safety's sake, but then again, everybody in the offices were actually wearing garb like this. Well, this was a video. <laughs> <laughs> all right, another one, another one. Our first stop was the SMT Manufacturing Center. Now, what that basically means is that processing packages and all of the bits and pieces that go into the actual processes of the phones were created here and then tested through rigorous routines in order to make sure that they had high fidelity. Now, a quick history lesson told us that this particular portion of the factory originally was set to Oppo's Blu-ray player. So all of the different circuits and the processors that went into their Blu-ray players were put here. Uh, but of course, as the evolution went with Oppo, it eventually went on to cell phones and smartphones, a lot of which were on display at the beginning of this particular portion of the tour. The sights and sounds to a factory like this are probably what you would expect. You have dozens and dozens of people in just this one room and hundreds and hundreds inside the entire factory itself with lights accompanying them and the whirring and the sounds of the machines uh, that are really sort of the soundtrack behind what is ultimately the creation and the testing of a phone. Now, we did look at the process of creating a processor for one of these phones, the R7 in particular, and you can see the, the boards right here that are created in different batches, and not only are they put inside different uh, machines in order to create the little bits and pieces that are then melded onto the boards, uh, but they are also tested later on to ensure their quality in a number of different uh, conditions. Uh, this particular machine uh, will not only meld all of the pieces together in a very high temperature heat, but then later on they will be put into a computer and be tested for all the tiny little parts to make sure that they are working properly. What we give Oppo a lot of credit for, and as we were able to see firsthand, is the fact that Oppo really creates everything themselves in their own factories. They don't really outsource pretty much any part of the phone to another ODM or anything like that. But of course, in an office like this, you have people not just working in factories just like the one you just saw, but of course there are designers and a lot of logistics going on on the business side of things in offices such as this that we didn't necessarily get to see. But here is where we got to the quality control section, and what you just saw this person do is put some R7s inside of this tumbler and essentially this tumbler will rotate a lot of times in just one hour uh, in order to test its structural capabilities uh, and even over here just past it was a small two inch ish uh, test in order to see just how uh, the phone would fare in very tiny drops and even this machine that keeps pressing the buttons for 42,000 times a day to make sure that they are going to last for the entirety of their lifetime uh, this particular one is just a pressing test uh, in order to see if under some pressure the phone is not going to cave or to get any dents or anything like that and of course a big old drop test machine that we got to see a number of times here is a look at the temperature uh, and various conditions testing. Um, from sub-zero temperatures to super high temperatures, they put these phones in a bunch of different machines in order to test whether or not they will still be operable. And all the phones you're seeing in this particular VAT are actually on and performing one app uh, in order to see if they would continue to do so even under all of these extreme cold or hot conditions. But of course, there are times when you just can't get past good old human-based testing. Uh, but it was at that point that we were able to sit down, have a drink or two, and just sort of rest up for what would become our interview with three particular people from the Oppo line. Pure Image, Color OS, and of course, VOOC Charging. For the software of the camera, actually now the design, the interface is getting simpler. So it's easier for our users to choose among different options. And with their latest PI, Pure Imaging, they're offering more professional plugins for the users to choose. So their hope is that their users can enjoy the fun of taking photos under different scenarios. 
And on the following day, our final visit with Oppo was at their offices, where we met with a lot of our friends from Oppo, either from the PR side of things to the website side of things to even the social media side of Oppo's uh, campaigns. And of course, they are celebrating their 10-year anniversary, so you see the number 10 everywhere. But it was in these offices, which was actually pretty green and really high up on the building, that we really saw where the magic kind of happens, uh, where the phones are created at the factory. This is where they are put out into the world, not only via a media presence, but also in all the different ways that Oppo wants to present it. Uh, even with their mascot, Ollie, <laughs> of which they had a full costume available, including this huge head that one of our friends, Sean from Oppo, was happy to don. Uh, but really, it's an office setting where everyone is working together in order to create an image of Oppo that comes out to not only all of you guys, but also through us and in the contacts with people like us here at Android Authority. Their office was pretty incredible, actually, considering it was near the top of a building, and it really uh, included things like break rooms and uh, views of the entire Shenzhen city and Hong Kong, which is right across the River Bay. Uh, and really, it was here that we got to just sort of hang out with Oppo. And after everything that they were able to show us at the launch and at the factories, we were happy to be here despite some of the weather conditions. So we want to give one last thanks to our friends over at Oppo for allowing us to come by and to basically see their workplaces, whether it was the factory or even the office. Uh, but don't remember, for all of you guys, we just wanted to give you this sort of glimpse into uh, the inner workings of a company like Oppo. But we do still have our content from uh, the launch events with the R7 and the R7 Plus, and you can see them right over on the side in the corner there, uh, and you'll be able to see our first looks for those. Until then, keep it tuned to Android Authority for our full reviews of those and more, and make sure you keep tuned here because we are your source for all things Android.